is going on you guys this could be an exciting one i don't know for sure yet but i want to take you guys along for the ride today we're going to be going to look at a 1994 e420 w124 chassis for those familiar i've been looking for cars left and right for months i've struck out on some really heartbreaking deals that i haven't told you guys about so if i do end up picking this car up i'll highlight all of those things otherwise this video might not even exist but i figured i would take you guys along for the journey just in case so we're heading out uh, east in Washington um, to a shop called DG Vintage Coachworks. Uh, guy specializes in uh, Porsche restorations and things like that. But he's had this car for a few years now and is looking to uh, sell it off. So he's sent a bunch of videos, sent a bunch of things. I've tried to do as much research as possible, but a few things remain in the air that I'm not quite sure of yet. I don't know if it has updated wiring harness which is a huge deal for these chassis, anything 1992 to 1996, 95 for Mercedes, had the biodegradable harnesses upper and lower in the engines. So those are a big deal uh, to find out if they've been replaced. Uh, and if not, you gotta account for that uh, when you're making your you know, offer. So that's the one big thing that I don't know yet um, that's going on with it. The other thing that I know, it has an oil light on and a coolant light on. Um, but oil pressure is good from the videos he sent me. The coolant is staying stable. And then there's also an SRS light, but he has an aftermarket Momo wheel on it. So I figured that's probably what that's from. Uh, the oil and coolant light, I don't know for sure what it is, but that kind of gives me apprehension of uh, maybe the harness is bad. And those are kind of telltale signs of the harness maybe not having been replaced yet. Uh, it could be the oil sender or the coolant level sender as well. So. We'll see once we get there, but yeah, I'll take you guys along for the ride and let you guys know what happens. Let's head out. So here's the car. I'm kind of giving it a look over right now. The only real imperfections on the body. Uh, he had some bigger wheels on here. I'll flash a picture. Um, this fender kind of got bowed out a little bit. If you guys know W124s, they're kind of hard to find 18s that'll work without rubbing. And then there's a little, it's hard to even see, kind of a little bash up here. But besides that, super straight. All right, so good news so far. It does have the updated harness. Looks like this one was manufactured in 01. Um, I can't remember what FD, it's it's German that FD stands for, but it's basically manufactured date. So there's design date and manufactured date. Um, and so the design date is 92. This is a, looks like a W124, 440-1906. Um, the other thing I checked as well is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the MAF has a little icon right there. Um, you're not gonna be able to see it here, but it says 01 also, so that's another way to check. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is, because it has that check engine light and the uh, coolant light, luckily it has the, um, I forget what these are called, uh, something I am readers or something like that uh, to read the codes this is an eight pin one and luckily it's got the flash button because this was originally a California car a lot of these if they weren't California cars didn't have the button on them you have to buy the separate um, scan tool that people sell aftermarket now if you need one buy one from Rick Potter Mercedes source that's like the best deal you can find 30 bucks on eBay I'll probably still pick one up if I end up getting one of these but yeah So I've cleared the code a couple times and the oil light is kind of coming on and off. Uh, it was code 25, which is a cam position sensor. Could be a multitude of things, could be um, dirty contact on it, could be a bad sensor. Not really sure, but 
what's most important right now is I got to see how it runs and drives. So definitely putting the camera away for this. Be safe. If you're testing somebody else's car, don't camera and drive unless you got somebody in the passenger seat. Um, there was a coin stuck in here. Uh, I don't know if that was like a little trick. You guys let me know, but I took that out. I'm going to let it just drive and drive. And then after that, I will uh, test it out different, uh, different gears and stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, take it for a spin. All right, so I don't know how much more I'm gonna be able to film. A couple things that are standing out so far. Test drive, it drives really nice. I actually really love the experience of the W124. I haven't driven one before this one. Um, it's very similar to the 202, like very uh, spacious inside, very airy, very open. Feels very like fish tank, safe, nice experience driving. Um, it's basically overheating right now which is this is a pretty common thing with mercedes i feel like my w202 used to do this it'll come back down uh, the fans will kick on at 107 like they're supposed to it'll bring it back down to about i don't know 90 plus something and then it will kind of creep its way back up and kind of stay around 100 and when you're driving it it stays really close to 80 uh, celsius but um there's that and then the other thing that i'm getting is a code 25 which is the knock sensor. So knock sensor is faulty. That's what it's showing up as. I don't know exactly where the knock sensors are on the M119. I don't know how difficult they are to replace. The part itself is cheap. So I need to research that before I can do anything. My phone is dying. So I'm probably gonna have to tell this guy to give me the night to kind of look things over, think things through. And uh, maybe we can make a deal out of this. I really do like the car. Um, it drives really cool. Like I said, and um, it's clean overall. Just missing the star, get one of those for cheap. I gotta see, you know, is this a thing because the car overheated? Is that why the paint is like this? Or is this just fades over time? I don't really know. Um, seems kind of odd being that the rest of the car's paint is in good shape. Uh, this is all just dirt for me driving right now. Um, it doesn't really rub too much actually with the 18s. I could definitely size them down. I could probably sell these wheels. They're pretty cool wheels. I normally don't like the uh, chrome trim like that, but I don't mind them with this. But anyways, I will, uh, I guess I will keep you guys updated. Let's check this out real quick. Oh my goodness. It seems a bit odd. Tank is pressurized. Oh my goodness, bro. Okay, well, we will leave it there. There's the car for you guys. And we'll see if I can reach a deal. All right, guys, what's going on? It's the next day. Just want to give a quick update. I'm kind of moving around a lot of parts right now but I'm gonna go pick up the car and I'm gonna bring it back uh, over my area or to my area to have a pre-purchase inspection done um, by really the only shop that I trust for Mercedes stuff if I can't do it myself and this is just a case where you know it's about $200 for the pre-purchase inspection and $3,800 for the car potentially so this is just me covering all bases right now I feel pretty comfortable with the car and comfortable with what I'm paying but there are a few issues that I don't know uh, what's happening exactly. So I would rather have, you know, uh, sufficient diagnostic tools hooked up to it. There's a guy at the shop that I'm going to that's really experienced with W124. So I'll feel much more comfortable having that done and know exactly what issues are with the car and what to expect uh, if picking it up. So I'm gonna go ahead, take care of that. I gotta go pick it up, drive all the way back, wait two and a half hours or so for them to do it, drive it back there, hopefully reach a deal and I will update you guys along the way as we're going. But anyways, see you in a bit. All right guys, quick update, we're back with the car. I'm gonna get in, drive it back to Bellevue, and I will update you guys as I'm there, kind of waiting around, tell you guys what they're gonna look for in the uh, pre-person inspection. Here we go. All right guys, recording on my old phone, so quality might not be as good, but just filled up uh, 20 bucks, put it back to half tank, told the guy I would put some gas in it, and I was curious too to make sure the gas gauge was working. So that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and continue on our journey. We got about 50 minutes. Going through town, on a cool 
trip. Long way to go. All right, guys, car is being pulled in. I'm at Parks Place Limited. Um, this is the only place I ever take my cars if I do have to get service, just because I trust them. They have so many cool cars here right now. I'll check this 190 out. Porsches, 996. I don't know what that is, 993, correct me if I'm wrong. A bunch of Lambos, Ferraris, G-Wagon. All right guys, in the shop. When they tried to start it up, it was hesitant at first. Had to give it a little gas to start it up. So that was a new thing that hadn't happened before. Um, I'm just sitting around looking at other stuff in the shop right now. GT3, this is cool. Chaser. Might be somebody's personal car. So as we suspected, or I suspected, that lower harness has not been changed, which is why we're getting the lights that we are. The rest of the car, very solid. Um, has aftermarket cat. Should be two here originally. The rest of it is dry. Has a uh, new Bilstein shocks. Each in our lowering springs. See those? on all four corners, so that's a good sign. Um, everything's fairly dry. There's a little bit of seepage back here, but not much. Cobwebs. Busted out the old scanner. For example, this is the OBD1 port right here. Here, it kick on. All right, so we're pretty much done checking it over. Found some good stuff, found some bad stuff. And it's basically up to the seller what he's able to let it go for. Um, Cause I obviously am not gonna be able to pay 38 anymore uh, with that lowering harness needing to be replaced. Got some good company, LD420. That one's an automatic, which I've never seen before on the Kazis, but yeah, we'll see. All right guys, so we settled on a price. It's a done deal. New car for the channel right here. My wife's gonna follow me home. The rear bumper is in there, and we got the front bumper and the side skirts laid out in here. So here goes the journey home. All right, guys, on the maiden voyage. I'm not looking at the camera right now, so hopefully you guys are getting a decent view. Um, you can see the dash is lit up like a Christmas tree, but that's okay. That's how we bought the car, and we're gonna do the things to fix it to get those away. One of those is for the light, and one of those is for the SRS, which is because it has this cool aftermarket Momo wheel on it. The other three, yeah, well, we gotta fix those. So, anyways, it's cruising nicely. Uh, it has a slight shimmy, like around 60. Could be a multitude of things. It could be that uh, steering damper. It could be just the wheels and tires on here are not that great I know three of them are have like slight bends pretty much we found that in the uh, PPI today the tires are brand new but the car has been sitting also so the car the tires could have some hard spots it kind of feels like the more I drive it the smoother it's getting so you know it could just be the tires having some dead spots from sitting around so long but yeah um, we're cruising along got the bumpers here next to me and just enjoying this nice drive traffic this time of day nice weather catch you guys once we get home do a little walk around with the car again all right well guys i think my son approves <laughs> you like it is this your car yeah, yeah? okay <laughs> yeah you got the keys all right guys hanging out together we made it back home. Got that plastic that was sitting inside. <laughs> All 
All right, so update. We uh, still have the SRS right, of course, because that's for the steering wheel. It's not gonna go anywhere unless I pull the ball or do something, but the oil light uh, comes on here and there. Um, most time it stays on while I'm driving, but it'll like, when I restart the car, it'll be off and then sometimes it'll come back on. The coolant light, however, has gone off since this morning and not come back. I just cleared the code again for the code 25 knock sensor. Check engine light is off. So I'm gonna keep driving the car, you know, as is. I'm gonna try to get, you know, the juices flowing back into it. And, you know, that'll give me a better idea as to how urgent this harness job needs to be. Um, I definitely wanna be proactive with maintenance and catching it up and getting up to speed, but um, I'm gonna keep driving it because it's, it's driving good. Oh, there the oil light comes back on, like I said. It's been pretty typical that'll come back on after driving for a bit but the coolant light has been off all day um, it went off this morning on the way to work and it has not come back um, and i i know that the wiring harness you guys saw in the video the part where it goes to the oil level center was probably the worst of the harness so chances are that part of the wiring is just donezo and that's why it's throwing that off but the pressure is good um, pressure has been good the whole time and oil level is fine on the dipstick so we're gonna keep driving it and try to get this thing back into shape all right guys well I'm in the new studio now <laughs> normal recording spot is a w124 now uh, for this video at least hope you guys enjoyed this was a lot of fun um, I really love this car I've been driving it today and the last few days just checking it out I'm really enjoying the W124 experience. I see what everyone is talking about now and why it has such a cult following. Um, I don't know if cult's the right word, but you know what I mean. A squad, a uh, bunch of people that love these cars, diehard W124 chassis fans, and I totally understand it. So, um, giving it a full tank of gas right now. I just wanna give a, a couple of thank yous out to people that really helped me kind of through this buying process. Uh, number one, shout out to Danny, gentleman who sold me the car. He does Porsche restoration. I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but super cool dude and totally understood, you know, working into a deal based off of the things that the car needs. Um, and I've, I'm really happy with the purchase price that we ended up with. I feel like it was doable for both sides. Um, so big shout out to Danny. Um, also thank you to Dimitri for giving me some confidence and me telling him about the car and um, you know, kind of explained to me, he thinks it's a good deal, uh, as well as uh, Tyler, AKA Jerry the G-Wagon on IG. Uh, got to call you out of the blue, so thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge and experience. He's had a really clean uh, 400E in the past. We're gonna try to meet up soon enough. He's in the area. Um, who else? Special thanks to Mike, the senior technician over at Park Place. He offered a lot of insight and looking through the car with him kind of gave me the confidence if I could get it at a certain price um, for it to be a doable project for me to take on, um, a doable car to take on. Um, you know, they were saying that it might not be worth it if I was expecting to pay somebody to do the wiring job for the lower harness, but I'm just gonna kind of try to bite the bullet and try to find a used harness and do it myself. It cannot be that hard. I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it takes a lot of time, but nothing's too hard to tackle especially coming from you know we see we we manual swap the CV divide so we can definitely handle a wiring harness and uh you know even if we got to do the knock sensor harness and lifting up the engine taking out the engine mounts we got this okay so i'm confident that we can make up that you know ground money and hopefully with you know a thousand dollars or so you know end up at that thirty eight hundred dollars that i was originally going to pay for this car and um, kind of go from there so there's a few things that it needs that I know of, and I'm just kind of going through the checklist, prioritizing, making a shopping list and uh, getting everything together. So I hope you guys really enjoyed. Um, I will try to throw in some driving clips as well of the car, but if it doesn't make it into this video, um, you'll be seeing more soon enough. So anyways, see you on the next one. Peace. Thank you to all the subscribers, new, old, everybody. Can't thank you enough. And I look forward to sharing some W124 content proper on the channel. Thank you guys, peace.